Hello, everybody. It's Corey Ryan Forster here from the Well Read Podcast. And this podcast, as always, is brought to you by WellReadComedy.com, W E L L R E D Comedy.com, which is where you can find tickets to the shows that we are doing. Uh, we were just in Washington, D.C. Appreciate everybody that came out to the shows in Washington, D.C. at the Improv, one of our favorite clubs. So much fun. Uh, it was nice to meet y'all. It was nice to do shows for y'all. It was nice to be uh, laughed at. Tremendous stuff. We can't wait to be back next year. Up next, November 6th, Seattle, Washington. November 7th, Spokane, Washington. <laughs> Excuse me. My, I lost my voice on stage in D.C. Uh, number seventh, uh, November 7th, Spokane, Washington. November 12th through the 13th, we're going to be in Lexington, Kentucky, back where we recorded our album some years ago at Comedy Off-Broadway. November 29th through the 21st, Charlotte, North Carolina. December 3rd, we're in New Orleans, Louisiana. December 11th, which is my birthday, through the 12th, we're going to be in Naples, Florida. And then we're rounding out the year with our homecoming shows in Nashville, Tennessee, December 16th through the 19th at Zuzuzuzanies, our home club, baby. 2022, what we've got booked so far, January 16th, Chicago, Illinois, January 21st through the 22nd, Omaha, Nebraska, then we're on to Indianapolis, Indiana, Louisville, Kentucky, Knoxville, Tennessee, Little Rock, Arkansas, Bentonville, Arkansas, and Portland, Oregon, and by the way, and y'all know this because y'all been fans of our podcast for a while, y'all are the, y'all are the real diehard fans, y'all know that just because it ain't on the website don't mean we ain't coming, you know we're booking stuff all the time uh logistics have been kind of crazy for this tour you know on account of the world exploded between the last tour and this one so you know we're trying to get to you i promise we can't wait to see you uh, a couple other plug by the way if you're used to watching this on youtube we're so sorry but since we've been back on the road that's been actually a little bit more difficult uh it's easier to do the podcast because we're together but getting it on tape is it's kind of a whole thing so very sorry um but hope you're still enjoying it and uh, a couple other plugs hey go sign up for trace patreon if you want to also drew has into the biscuit it's a podcast with him and dj dj lewis trey has evening skews with him and smart mark ag and me i have a new uh, venture i'm doing i'm writing stories over at cory ryan forster.substack.com most of them are free you can subscribe if you want to and get bonus stories and get audio versions of the stories but you can just sign up for free and i'd be just as happy so we appreciate you and uh yeah this was a conversation that we had in washington dc in my hotel room like subscribe tell all your friends download the podcast we'll see you out there and we love you we love you so very much Skew. i was thinking of something else what did i say we should talk about on the podcast that we were talking about we were walking last night you said closing time oh shit god damn it and we what had a lot of we had a lot of thoughts. You said we should talk about that on the podcast. Oh, I wanted to ask if you ate your leftover. Uh, oh, yeah, you your leftover pasta. Are we? Oh, we're going. Yeah, we better. We're going. Uh, I had just had a few bites of it, and then I threw it in the trash. Okay, because I had a salad. Yeah, because we've been talking behind your back all day about how we were hoping you would get food poisoning. That's a common theme that, with y'all <laughs> that you hope something <laughs> bad would happen to me. <laughs> Well, it's just because for our listeners that don't know, you stay eating old meat that has not been refrigerated. Drew and don't believe that one time no, grows that's not true. in old food. One time, y'all found out that I ate something without it being in the refrigerator the next day, and y'all's response to that, I don't think so. No. Y'all's response to that definitely has made me rethink it from time to time. Plus, I looked up... Because I was like, I don't know, I don't ever get sick from it. Maybe let me look it up and see what the deal is. I learned about botulism, which is not a political campaign or move movement centered around, you know. Botchels? Botchels. Somebody needs to do something about all these goddamn botchels out here. I'm an anti-botulist mm. person. I'm pro myself. Uh, well, got a debate on our hands. Oh, okay, it's a joke about the ism part. Yes. <laughs> yes. Dude, dude, dude. Dude, I'm a little. St- I was sitting there going like, "What well, oh ri- reminds with botchels that I don't know about?" It rhymes with populism, kind of. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's like in an M and M way. Populism, populism. Who was just a little slow on uptake? No, I was like, I was going like, "Oh my god!" I, I thought you were thing. doing a bit. I thought you were setting us up to. I don't know what. No, I wish I was. I do not feel funny right now. I was not setting you up for a bit at all. Well, it's anyway, like smashing or anything. I will. <laughs> we were just kind of sort of hitting. 
I will absolutely eat, you know, food that's been left out for three or four hours. I think people who just refuse to hours, do that. Yeah. Three or four hours, that is okay. But, but you, you, have, today, you I'll like, do it the next day. Turkey we had from an lunch. underpass and like <laughs> boil the turkey. Like, I'll just boil the turkey. That was one time and I was really hungry. I'm just saying, like, but to be fair, like, you, you, you like, eat ass. Yes, I do. So like today, that, I know, I know, I know. It's a solid argument. No, I mean, I'm not gonna no, fuck. Also, I'm not yeah. gonna fuck the lasagna. To be right. fair, that ain't, a, that ain't a solid argument. Well, like ass is what you, you you're say, acting like it's the, that eating? it's that it's gross because like I don't know. It won't. It don't hit to eat mm-hmm. rather than it will give you botulism. You ain't gonna get botulism from eating a butthole. No, but you're Dapazuli gonna get salmonella. Not if you're eating your wife's butthole. Wives can't get, give you we, some of them. I guess. Well, I guess wife poop don't have diseases in it. You ain't there. Do, are you looking poop? I, I mean, I no, not on purpose. We're very clean. Me and Amber are a very clean group. Like, and this is probably weird to some people, but like, and this is a both of us thing. It's not like one of us was like, this is the only way we're ever going to do it. We both just happen to prefer this. But like, we pretty much only bang after both of us. We, I get in the shower and then. It's a ritual. So I get in the shower, and then she goes and get in the shower. And while she's in the shower, I fluff myself. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That way, make it, when, make it look ready. Yeah, and that way, when she gets out, it's pretty much just like she just takes the towel off and then fucking, you know. Yeah. All sure. right. Well, hold up. You think you can't get sick from eating ass? No, I didn't say you can't, but I don't think eating your wife's ass when you're not. I mean, if you're fucking eating a hobo's ass under an underpass <laughs> like you do, because they eat rancid that. food and that's what's in their Wait, ass. Now I fuck hobos. No, you eat stuff under underpasses, including hobo butts. The turkey. It, it it seems clear to me and very reasonable that. Eating ass is much more dangerous than eating day old food. I don't think that's true. Are we still talking? I've talking, done both. Are we talking Neither about, have made are we me talking sick. About random ass, willy nilly ass. <laughs> I don't. His under- name was Willy. I'm not. Yeah. Was hobo. I'm not under- I don't understand <laughs> how. Oh, you ain't old willy nilly's ass. Old God box damn. car willy nilly. I don't understand how knowing a person makes their ass safer because she just got out of the shower. That in my situation it like is because we both just showered. Yeah, I, I, w- I wouldn't eat an ass if they didn't just shower. Right. Sure. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying by not oh, willy yeah. nilly ass. You ain't. I'm not eating willy nilly meat. Ass. It's you from Filomino. It's from a nice Listen, fucking Italian so restaurant. Here's what I brought this up specifically today. We ate it's lasagna. At, we ate that restaurant. I was more worried about the cream in that situation. We ate honestly. at Restaurante Filomena. Ah, uh, Restaurante Filomena. That's a spicy meatball. Yes. Hey. Like the arancini is very nice. Very, very nice. It's not at all. <laughs> Do you know all. pepperoni is an American it. thing? I did. Yeah, yeah. I did know that. Which You guys wouldn't know that. Yeah, well, you're right. Yeah, But uh, so, anyway... Restaurante Filomena in Georgetown here in Washington, D.C. It's one of the hittingest Italian restaurants in the world. It's so good. I'll tell you, my, real quick aside, my second favorite Italian restaurant, I think that we've eaten at in the five years of tour, and I bet neither one of you will hold guess on, it. Hold on. I bet hold you on, won't. Hold on. Hold on. Because we only went there once. Hold ever. on. We ain't been back. Hold on. God damn it. To the city, even. That's oh. why we haven't been back here. Oh. But it was flames. It wasn't I don't think I remember. Fargo, was it? It was Akron, Ohio. Luigi's. I yes, Luigi's. Man. Luigi's, yeah. yeah. That place hit so hard. And then Ohio. we got to do sets with Roy Wood Jr. and uh, Ronnie Chain. And Ronnie uh-huh. Chain, yeah. yeah. I, dude, Akron, Ohio actually... I thought we on. just got pizza there. No, I was thinking about We Youngstown. got like meatballs and stuff too. We didn't get like pasta. Ohio's but we got, got a big uh, Italian I know, they population. Do. Yeah, yeah, that's like a known thing around yeah, there. Yeah, because Youngstown had great I pasta. didn't know until we went there, but yeah. yes, that's a thing there. But anyway, so today we're at Philomena in Georgetown, our favorite Italian restaurant. It hit super duper hard. And Drew got this like lasagna two ways. It was white sauce on one side and red sauce on the other side. It was so super, as to make pink. So as to make pink. It was super fucking good. So good. Drew said he was going to get a box because it was huge, and we had uh, appetizers, and we were all very full. What was, before we, and I forget, what was it was the, the size? It was, it, was the, it was the size of your foot, Evan that lasagna. Chini. Yeah, it was. It was that lasagna was, had gout. The, the, the meatballs were, of course, great, but that fucking... Arancini, it's like Arancini sounds like a Yankees player. Am, yeah. am I stupid for saying this? But like, it had some qualities of like shepherd's pie, like the meat. No, there was it, fucking peas in it, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the way the meat was, in like, and it was fried. God damn it. Anyway, it's like a ahead. fried ball of meat and hell. Bro, but you not, know what would be so good is fucking red sauce on a fucking shepherd's pie. Yes, it would. Let's do that. Okay. So, mm-hmm. 
He then the, the portion sizes are huge. Y'all gotta go this place if you're in the DC area. It's Drew right. got this big ass lasagna two ways. Again, I think that's important because one of it is a cream sauce, cream based sauce. Mm-hmm. He said because he can't eat it all, understandably, that he's gonna get to go box. And I said, but dude, we don't have our the hotel we're staying at, we don't have refrigerators or microwaves. And he was just like, Yeah, well, you know, that don't stop me. And so this is like lunchtime. I mean, it's three PM. Mm-hmm. But in my first of all, I'm assuming we have a show at seven. We're leaving here yeah, at six. Yeah, we ate the window. We're le- leaving the hotel at six forty five. It's three PM. So I'm like, he ain't gonna eat it before the show, which means he's talking about eating this shit at one AM when we get back. Three PM to one AM, a cream sauce sitting on the counter at room temperature. No, I would not trust that. It's mm-hmm. not as egregious as the next morning, but I don't. You ought not do that. Food safety guidelines would uh, concur with me and Cho. That's a conspiracy. But I will say <laughs> to defend Drew, he, he does okay? do that, and he don't die. <laughs> right, right. I was just making sure I was recording. Yes, I am recording. Yeah, I was about to say to defend Drew a little bit. Like <laughs> he doesn't get sick, but like I choke I, him on spit from time to time. Yeah, but the thing is, that's it. Do you a, think you don't get sick? The thing with. Dude, it's not a it's not a one person I can say it's a it's a fucking uh oh my god what's the word for like not lottery ticket it's the it's a I'm an anecdote no this is anecdotal a, evidence you are anecdotal evidence yes. but that's what I'm trying to say I cannot believe I can't think of the right. term out there it's like a <sighs> sound it out I can't but I think it out. but I think it's sort of the, you're the rolling re- the dice but I th- right yeah but I think it's sure, sort of I'm trying to reverse say. of what you're saying which is it I, either has the bacteria in it or it don't I, yeah but I think that those yeah I don't think that the bacteria is there but I'll somehow beat it I don't think that at all I think that after like you know six or seven hours I'm just not worried about it I think that there's a very rare chance the bacteria will be there I think those guidelines rightfully so air very air, much right. on the side of caution number just one like when you get eggs like the everybody will tell you like look the ex- expiration date on eggs like big egg does that so that you'll buy more eggs like they're actually good for way longer now I don't take a goddamn chance on that shit but like when they make those they have to air to the side so, of like we don't want nobody to get and I egg. agree this is the side of caution I agree but if you google this it says the general rule of thumb is that food that isn't otherwise preserved must not be in the danger zone of 40 to 140 degrees Fahrenheit, so just room temperature, well, a big scale of room temperature, for uh, for more than two hours. So you're talking about nine I'm literally going to die tonight because hours. of all this. Because we've talked about it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go back and crush that? I just assume, No, I, I had a couple bites and then threw it away. I just assume with you it was kind of like, you know, I had a buddy when I was a kid that like, he always played, bare, you know, basketball barefoot, and because of that, like his feet, like had just like they was pretty much shoes. Where if I was to take my feet, <laughs> where if I was to take my shoes off and try to play, I couldn't because I never did it. And like your stomach is sort of like I don't rock worn feet. I don't think you can raw dog botulism. Yeah, I don't. That's what I'm saying. I don't think. That, I don't. Well, I guess you can't. But I've just figured that with him, like his stomach I mean, is I guess a steel trap. Could. I guess you can do that. But you, I've I've read before that like people say like, how is it that animals can eat raw meat and stuff like that? And I'm not saying this is true of all animals. Yeah, I'm a zoologist. Yeah, right. But like, the thing I saw a commenter on Reddit say was like, oh, they can get sick, and sometimes they do. It's just like, you know, uh, if that if that shit is in the meat that you eat, that's gonna make you sick. It's going to make you sick, but like a whole lot of times it ain't in there. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like you can eat it and be fine, but that's what, yeah, you're rolling the Isn't dice. Isn't that I what sushi grade fish means is that where it came from and the way we packed it and all that, like this meat is of a quality that it's not going to be in there. Yeah. That, yeah. It's yeah. definitely like you don't want to eat non, you don't want to get non, like if you get non sushi grade tuna steaks, you want to cook them a little bit longer. Well, you guys are freaking me out because like my stomach is hurting well, because I ate too much. Dude, you know it's who been else? been hurting the whole time. You know who else does this shit? Your dog? Honestly, somebody's, I'm sorry. I <laughs> no, that's fine. That. It's fine. I wasn't Amber, thinking about So I mean, that, close, but, but like, what did you say? What did you say? I said your dog. Oh. Uh, just to say, call you a dog. I wasn't I got thinking about. It. I didn't the even think about scenario. it until you apologized. Honestly, well, uh, you can understand why I apologize, though. Yeah, for sure. Is it because yeah. his dog's dead? Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. No, I mean. Amber does this shit. But like Amber, I've seen Amber do it like with sushi, like, and it was only a couple hours. And what? Just, yeah, but like, dude, she doesn't like. Amber, now, granted, sometimes, though, it'll just be sushi that's been in the fridge for a couple of days, but that's not even, like, sushi, dog, but dude. she'll do it, and she never gets fucking sick, and she fucking... Dude. And then he eats her ass. 
Yeah, that's true. She not on them days because I'm mad at her because we always get in arguments whenever we get in so many arguments over food because she has so many blind spots with food. Like it's very wild. Like she she cooks now and she is a good cook. So I'm not going to be the guy that's like my wife. Can't. She when she cooks, she's good at it. But she never really did it until we started. Like we got married, not even we were dating, because she just like went to college and like she's just ramen noodling or whatever. So she's got all these fucking like weird blind spots. Like one day. Uh, like two or three years ago, so she's a fully grown adult woman who's teaching children. I went to the cabinet and I was like, there was a, a carton of chicken broth, you know, and you get them at the store. And, I, and so I was like, ooh, I'm going to make a soup or whatever. And I went to grab it and it was half full. And I was like, what the what, what the fuck? And I go to open it. It's like, it had been open and then put back on. The, and I was like, oh, well, somebody made a mistake. And I threw it away or whatever. And goes, hey, why'd you throw away that chicken broth? I go, well, it's bad. She goes, I just got it like the other day. I go, yeah, but you use some of it and then you put it, you didn't put it in the fridge. You put it back on the shelf and I'm expecting her to be like, oh shit, brain fart. And she goes, okay. I go, what are you, what do you fucking mean? Okay. She goes, well, at the store, it was just on the shelf. I go, I know, but yeah. I was like, do you know the phrase refrigerate after opening? She goes, <clears throat> she, and she's like, I thought if, no, if you get it on the shelf, then that it can be on the shelf. She literally for so long just believed that like if you got it on the shelf uh -huh. warm, then it could always be warm. And I was Wild. like, no, baby. She's like, well, why would it have to be refrigerated? I go, it's chicken. Uh huh. She's like, oh, it like hadn't crossed her mind that it was chicken. That broth is chicken. That broth is chicken. What all do you like? Why don't we have to refrigerate peanut butter? I know some of you are supposed to. I don't know. Or no, uh, syrup. The, the I preservative. Think... Let's take a break from the podcast real quick while I talk to you about something. That I find to be of the utmost importance. Up, up, utmost. Is it utmost or utmost? I don't know. I don't know. You know why? Because I haven't had my coffee yet this morning. That's why I don't know how to say utmost or utmost. Coffee is probably one of the most important things for me. If I'm going to be creative, if I'm just going to get my day started, you know, head outside for a jog like I do, go to the park, walk like I, I, like I, like I love to do, just to clear my head, get my mind right. You know, nothing, no morning is complete without a cup of coffee and brewing your daily cup at home. It just hits different from the first aroma of ground beans to that very last sip. The ritual of morning coffee helps you start the day more grounded. Is that a pun there? <laughs> and centered. Beanbox elevates your coffee ritual even further with a curated selection of world class coffees delivered right to your door. Look, it's your boy the show here. I'm a busy man. I write for a living, do comedy for a living. I'm currently working on an act. We do this podcast. I genuinely would not get through any of that if it was not for coffee. And Beanbox has just upped the ante, baby. Beanbox, first off, you're not just get, it's not just your run of the mill coffee. This is, I mean, gourmet stuff. Okay, what I had, what I just had. I've been going through a rotation because my friends at Beanbox sent me a uh, variety pack. The one that I just had is called the Brazil Canaan Estate. Let me read to you what this says on the package because I can't say it any better than they do, and this is true. Look, we nicknamed this cup of coffee. This, excuse me, we nicknamed this cup of excellent contender the co cook. You know, if I again, if I'd have drank it before I started, then I'd be saying this right. The cookie dough coffee, because of its distinct sweet cookie flavor, with its rich, smooth body and perfectly balanced toastiness, it definitely takes the cake, or the chocolate chip cookie. Its notes are earthy, nutty, chocolate, and brown sugar. And let me tell you this. I had some last night when I got in off the road, because I just needed, I was like, you know what, I'm tired, I've been on the road for nine hours, I need something to relax me and get me a little pepped up so I can write my journal tonight. You know, and I did. I had this Brazilian Canaan estate. I mean, I saw the freaking, I saw it said cookie dough coffee, and I'm in. And it tastes absolutely tremendous. It is wonderful. It's a medium roast, but they have all different kinds that you can slip into your coffee routine. Enjoy an endless variety of exclusive specialty coffees from award winning roasters, and it's curated all by Beanbox's own world class coffee expert. Discover new independent roasters and small batch micro lots. Every single month, no other subscription coffee service offers the same incredible variety and quality. I promise you that, baby. It's always roasted and delivered at peak flavor. Their tasting box offers a rotating flight 
of whole bean or freshly ground artisan coffees, depending on what you need, roasted to order and shipped straight to your door, order monthly with no long-term commitment so you can pause, skip, or cancel anytime. Not many sub- subscription services let you do that, by the way. Normally, they don't care. They're just like, no, it's you're either with us or you're without us. They let you pause. That's amazing. It's amazing for a gift for the coffee lover in your life, which you've probably got 27. If you've got 27 friends, you've got 26 coffee lovers. We all know that. Check out the World Coffee Tour. This is from them. It's uh, with 16 coffees sourced from some of the best coffee-producing regions around the globe. Now, here is where your deal comes in, baby. Take a guided tour through some of the best coffees around the world with Beanbox and order today at beanbox.com slash wellread. And you're going to get your first tasting box for just $5. That's an insane deal. All you got to do is use the promo code WELLRED, beanbox.com slash WELLRED, promo code WELLRED, and you're going to get your first monthly tasting box for just 5 bucks. Use that promo code WELLRED. Beanbox, by God, we thank you for supporting the podcast, but... They're not the only ones supporting this podcast. Another friend of this podcast who has also sent me some great stuff, and I am actually wearing right now, before I have my coffee, it's my sweatshirt from Cuts. Cuts Clothing, baby. Fellas, listen. The sport of business means demanding excellence from your craft and wardrobe. Your fits need to be versatile. Blending timeless style and comfort so that you look as good as you feel. For that, you know where it is, baby. It's Cuts Clothing. They've taken a classic men's fashion staple, the plain tee, and refined it, combining premium quality with a minimal aesthetic. You just take the plain tee, but they make it look like Tony Stark. It's the bleeding edge of fabric technology, which meets the man confident enough to wear it. It's Cuts Clothing. In 2016, Cuts founder Steve Borelli the homie, set out to create clothes ready for every occasion the modern man faces. He started by reinventing the t-shirt. And what happened... You might ask, well, this ain't just me saying it, baby. This is GQ Magazine saying it's the only shirt worth wearing. Consider the, Also consider the new Cuts hoodie, which is what I'm wearing right now. They developed Hyperloop French Terry fabric. French Terry, that'd be an uncle that, that's, that's like if my uncle liked baguettes. <laughs> French Terry fabric, a textile that's temperature controlled and ageless. You are never going to need to take it off, and you certainly won't want to. Or try the wrinkle-free PYCA piece. Pekka, Pekka, the Pika Polo, Pika Polo, a design that keeps you fitted for the office, the golf course, at home, the gym, or your next hot day. Each piece of clothing is designed with custom-engineered fabric, expertly graded for the perfect fit, arming you for every challenge and opportunity. And here's the deal. It ain't just a lifestyle. It's not just clothing. It's office leisure apparel for the sport of business. Get 15% off of your first order by going to cutsclothing.com slash wellread. That's cutsclothing.com slash wellread for 15% off of the only shirt worth wearing. Thank you, Cuts, for sponsoring the podcast. And speaking of the podcast, let's get back to it. Skew. The, they put preservatives in it. The You know, the all-natural peanut butter you get, that is supposed to be refrigerated right. after you open it. I thought sucks. that was to keep it from it separating. It don't hit for me because I don't want refrigeration. Wait, I thought that was no. just to keep it from separating. No, it's. I mean, I'm pretty sure it doesn't have the preservatives. Yeah, it which don't I have, do. You know, all that it's ultra processed shit, including yeah. the preservatives. I got an all mind. natural Kroger one, and it doesn't say refrigerate after opening. And I was like, oh, it ain't. Do natural. You want me to blow y'all's fucking mind? I mean, right I now? might be wrong about that. You might be right about it separating, but I'm That's pretty sure it's. I'm pretty sure it's not um, safe in the same way. I just remembered this. This actually all started because we got those meat boxes, and my me and Andy weren't home, and mine got left on my porch and i got home three days later but it had dry ice in the bottom and i was trying to talk myself into because that keeping some of it and i didn't and that's the first time i looked up botulism and uh that shit's scary dude Mm -hmm. so that i haven't Mm -hmm. been doing it the same since then you've done the thing we're talking about today before on the road but the other major example like when you said that was one time what i think of and maybe you didn't end up actually eating it but do you remember when I had been sent a box of barbecue from Black's and I made the brisket and it was huge? So I took half of the brisket and I brought it to you and Andy's house. And you told me later, you're like, dude, I fucking left that out on the stove. <laughs> you put it in the stove. Like, not to heat it up. You're like, I'm going to keep this in the stove. You forgot it was there and you left it there for at least a day or maybe two days. And I thought you told me you still tried it. I did try it, I think. Yeah. Okay. That was dumb. Well, it was a huge bummer because it was super good. I'm sorry. 
this is kind of on topic because we were just talking about, but something that kind of blew my mind the other day that I never thought would happen. So, uh, like, not that long ago, I was on Twitter talking about something or whatever, and one of our fans commented uh, that, like, oh, I, I was basically saying some very stupid thing, like, oh, who doesn't like peanut butter? It wasn't exactly that. But Are we like, being filmed? Yeah, we're being filmed. Sorry. There? Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I was, I said, the way you said that made it sound like, a third party. Yeah, yeah, right, 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 right. You know what I mean? You guys think we're being filmed? <laughs> well, if if the answer <laughs> was no, I was gonna be I light. was gonna be like, please turn the ring light off. <laughs> we have this fucking ring light here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I I had said I was I was going back and forth with somebody, and I was basically said something like, "Yeah, man, you know, peanut butter and bacon are just two of those things that like pr- the only two things in the world that are not divisive. Like we all, everyone likes those two things, unless peanut butter kill you dead. Uh, uh, right, right, yeah. right." And this person commented back. They were like, mm, "I don't like I don't like peanut butter, but I don't have too much of a sweet tooth." And I remember just being like, "That's th- th- you think peanut butter is a sweet treat? Like that's your thing? That yeah, I've cut I've cut out the sweet treat, so I'm not on peanut butter." And I was like, "What the fuck? Peanut butter being a sweet treat? Like how fucking in shape are you that you're like, oh yeah, that's my little cheat?" Is a was spoon. it Robbie? No, it wasn't Robbie, but it sounds like some shit Robbie would say. Yeah. Well, my fucking point is, this was before I had like started living a little bit better. And so Robbie had me on this stuff, tell me this. He's like, you know, eat these shakes. He goes, you can actually put peanut butter in these shakes and make it better. He goes, mm-hmm. but he's like, but use natural peanut butter because the preserve is like, okay. And it was putting in the shakes so was fine. And then I just, all I was getting was natural peanut butter. And at first you're like, oh, God damn, this don't hit, but whatever. Anyway, I've had nothing but natural peanut butter for like four fucking months in my shakes and I've grown to like it. I fucking had a spoonful of regular peanut butter. Sure, sure. It's the sweetest God. And I, and I was like, uh, it was always this fucking sweet, yep. and I don't like it anymore. Like I, can't, I genuinely I can't, prefer natural. I can't drink Coca Cola's or Sprite. Was, it was just like we were I talking about. We were talking shit. about recently. Yeah, I bought an impulse purchase at the store. I bought a big bottle of V8 Splash. Oh I'm a V8 Splash. <laughs> so sweet. Lo- I loved that shit. I hadn't had it in years. I bought some, and it is comically sweet. That shit is like Kool-Aid. And what's hilarious about it is my fucking trash ass, back when that shit first came out, yep. I thought that was like healthy, so good for they you. Told, they for told you juice. My like mama still juice. does. Yeah. yeah, She feed that to the baby. Is regular V8 genuinely good for you? Uh, there's a lot full of, of sugar the, and no, bullshit no, no. too. There's no it's mostly sugar, vegetable. But, but, no, I know that's why but I'm sodium asking. wise and preservative. It is. It's only ve- it's vegetable like, juice, right? V8. My dad yeah, loved yeah. that no, no, shit. No, no. I thought they put a little apple in it. Just, just uh, maybe, for a treat. Yeah, maybe, but it's not. No, no, no. There's no sugar in it or whatever, but it does have a lot of preservatives and sodium. And literally, the only reason I know that shit is because, like, for the first time in my life, Robbie's got me uh, looking at sodium because of how much it bloats you and, you know, shit like that. But, like, uh, but no, dude, again, like, that was my mom used to drink a glass of V8 every morning. That's genuinely, like, it's you know, okay. It's hell yeah. But when okay. V eight decided to make they, fruit juice, they and, just and, and, they were like, "Listen, we ain't gonna and, be able to compete in this fruit juice game no. unless dude, we pack." We had there was no sugar. competition and in I, the in the cold soup game. I remember though. Cold soup. I, that's what it is. Oh, yeah. It is cold soup. I remember as a kid. It basically, I remember the way because I used to have a joke about it. I can't remember how it goes, but like it was definitely pitched as like. You know, the adults have their V8, and this is the alternative for kids. And they were pitching, like, this is healthy. Your kids should drink this instead of, like, Sunny D. And instead of, like, it's like, dog, it's not any different. Like, Surely it yes, was a little better. there are vitamins in there. There, there. there are vitamins in there. But, like, you can just put vitamins and a spoonful of sugar and put it in your goddamn mouth. You know what I'm saying? But, like, surely... Yeah, you covered it with the vitamins. You could just put vitamins in your I mouth. I just want to circle back very quickly. I googled uh, health risk of eating ass, <laughs> and I found a found a, uh, it's, uh, an article here. It's very long. I'm going to skip to the end and read. The bottom line. <laughs> di- Got it. It actually nice. says the bottom, parentheses, wank. The bottom line. <laughs> you were right to cut that part. Da- dining, <laughs> d- dining downtown is safe and sanitary as long as you and your par- partner practice safe sex and have good hygiene. Yeah. So I'm well, the good hygiene, sure. The safe sex, but I think they fuck safe sex. After reading, been like, saying it for years. I, I put a I condom think, on my tongue and eat my no, wife's no, 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 ass. Oh, about, I love her. They're not talking <laughs> about using dental dam and shit like right. that. I don't think. After reading through it, it just, it just means like responsible right, like, yeah. you know who you're, you're not who you know who butt you're eating and right. that it's been washed of course it's supposed to be washed i'm just saying that the risk is still there i so let me tell you something right now at the risk of everybody thinking i'm gross well no I'm, this is the opposite of gross uh 
I I love my wife. I do love. My I don't wife. care what anybody says, and, and I don't care no, if that's I disgusting. Care, I don't care if it's politically. No, it's not. That's not what I'm about to say. Um, the eating ass thing, the trend, and I say trend. I, mean, I know people have been doing it forever. It's just like being gay. All this new thing, this trans. What is that like? I know it's been around forever, but like it's popular now. I, that didn't happen, and I didn't start doing it until I got with Amber, uh, who is my wife and who was my it, my soulmate. I don't think that I would I wouldn't have eaten the ass of my Willy one night nilly. stands. I wouldn't have eaten Willie Nilly's hobo yeah. ass. Depends on who it was, I think. I, yeah, I mean, if they were real fucking hot, yeah, I'd have done it. You yeah. drink their. <laughs> I can name four women right now whose bath water you drink. Yeah, that's true. It, or 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 if I was fucking a girl and she said, "Eat my ass," <laughs> <laughs> that's true. <laughs> I'd probably do it then too, but like it definitely like. Well, there's also a huge difference between what any of us will do or think we'll do right now, not horny, yeah. versus horny. And all, I, in my opinion, all anal stuff Is was that. invented during sex, for sure. Because if you ask me no at dinner, do you want to put anything near a butthole? I'm like, nah. But if you ask me while I'm balls deep. In a person, yeah. do you want to put something near my butthole? Well, yeah, I'll now put my I do. Eye in there. Shout out Chance Willie. Got a great joke. Where he, I'm, I'll just do it. It's a quick hitter. Mm. Uh, being horny is weird because when you're not horny, somebody's like, "Hey, I'm gonna spit on you." <laughs> you're like, you "Better not." <laughs> but then you get horny. <laughs> somebody's like, "Hey, <laughs> I'm gonna spit on you." Yeah, I don't. You're that's like, a weird hell one. yeah. <laughs> you see in porn every now and then, they will just like spit in the chick's mouth. You know who does that? Somebody we know does that. I was trying to, yeah, I know. I didn't know if you wanted to say that. Nice. He, dude, he told me that. Me, you were on stage in Atlanta, me and him and Tushar back there, and he told that same joke. He did whatever. And I was, I was like, dude, I can't. I was like, I can't fuck with no spitting stuff or whatever. And he was, he was like, I was spitting in Andy's mouth or whatever. And I was just, <laughs> and I was just like, and I was just like, what? Yeah. It's a you new spit thing. Spitting her mouth. It's a, God <laughs> damn. It's our pandemic. It's a yeah, thing from the pandemic. That's the time to start it for sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, we were Is living that together. Thirty six pounds. You is that why you were like? Well, the reason I connected to that in my mind is uh, Arlo. Shout out Arlo, warehouser, friend of the show. Arlo did uh, one of me and DJ Zoom shows, and they had a Very joke. Funny Arlo. They had a joke about how they know everybody's getting weird and they're <laughs> jealous of that because they were living alone uh, or without a partner. They had roommates, but they were saying that they were jealous of how freaky people are having to get mm -hmm. because they're so bored. They're just spitting on each other. And then she went, oh, you made a face, Drew. You made a face. Like, sorry, they. they went, like, yeah. they, you made a face, Drew. Like, right in the middle of their set. And I was like, yeah, we do that. My, our, we got a, a new thing, but it's so pedestrian. Like, especially, is that we fuck in the guest bed sometimes. Mm, no, that's rules. Saucy. But... It's not, listen to how, why it started though. It's not saucy. It's literally like a handicap. Uh, it's because we are too far from the bed. Yeah, no, no, no. Our, the bed that we have, super, like that we sleep in every night, fucking super hits. Oh, like, yeah. it's one of the first, Mine too. it's one of the first things I bought with our book money. Like, it's a fucking expensive bed. And we were like, dude, we'll have it, literally have it for, for so long. I've always heard, you ever heard the old Papa saying, never, never uh, skimp on the things that separate you from the ground? Yeah. So, like, shoes, tires, oh, and yeah. mattresses, yeah. your bed. Like, those are things you're always supposed to, like, not be cheap. And you're about. out here telling people not to listen to Papaws. Well, <laughs> we. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> we spent a lot. Honestly, dude, we definitely got screwed. But like, we spent a lot of money on this mattress, and like, yeah, we we'll definitely have it for another twenty fucking years. It Wait, rolls. Why'd you get screwed then? Because I just remember I, I told everyone because this first this is the first time I'd ever had like money of mine in my life, and I didn't know how much things cost. It wasn't like twenty grand, was no, it? No, but. No, it wasn't twenty. It was fucking like close to six grand. Yeah, <laughs> like, I, I was gonna guess five grand. Yeah, okay, I think so I fun. think five is what expensive mattress okay, costs. Okay, all right. Well, I just remember telling like I told my my mom's friend Beth, who like Beth has money. That I was, she's like, you spent five fucking grand. She's like, if you know, if you do your research, you can get a really good mattress for a thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But whatever, I didn't. I was I paid cash like a Hell fucking yeah. Year. I went in there, awesome, there baby. So, anyways. That bed rules, but I, but I don't know if you guys know. Two pillows. Yeah. And we, I did, the pills were expensive, too. So, I don't know if y'all know this, but um, on, yeah, of course y'all know this. On the Tempur-Pedic beds, it's, 
you don't, it don't have no spring to it because you go in. So like, there's moves. I can't power bottom as good because like every time I go up, my back is sinking into the bed. And Amber was having trouble. She would get on top. I can and see that. Then her knees were in it, and so and so. I like fucking in the floor a lot. When, yeah, we do that whenever we're at her in laws. <laughs> my in laws, we fuck in their floor. But we, I was just sitting I, there with, out of respect. Yeah, out of respect for sure. Uh, but. We went one day uh, because we had a, f- a friend over and we'd let her sleep in our bed for some reason. And we were going to take the guest bed because they wanted to watch TV. That's where I was. And we got in there and we boned on the guest bed and like I fucking laid it down. On and I was like, bed. I was like, wait, wait, wait. She was like, what? What's happening? And I realized it was because it's an older mattress and it's got springs. Oh. So I was able to like, duh, so anytime that we're not your core is stronger too yeah, yeah for sure now i can pretty much do whatever i want but like yeah when we really want to like like we'll, she'll get out of the shower and, and sometimes she'll just go i think it's a guest bed night and that oh, means she wants go. me to you know drive it home driving so it home. yeah that's our so our kink is that we go have sex in our other bed me in and, our other room. me and andy are way freaker in a hotel room we don't we've never me thought and about are like that too me and yeah. amber I don't never know. have sex in hotels really what dude hotels okay, are like, i'll let y'all you remember mine. y'all remember when i think i talked about podcasts but remember when i fucked my dick up a little bit yeah that was because me, me and katie were in new york in a hotel room and was just you, you know, you fucked your dick broke. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you remember? Yeah, but I, I guess I didn't remember that it was from fucking. What else would it be from? Yeah, well, I mean, right. I feel like it had to be. Like uh, I've turned a corner too quick. You know, but it yeah. was. Uh, no, I had. What it actually ended up being was it was just like a very tiny laceration mm. right inside of my urethra mm-hmm. or whatever. And but let me tell you something right now. We're, we're just that, turning into black no, Christians. That, mm-hmm. that, buddy, let dog. You don't want that. You do not that want that. Uh-uh. I can't imagine. I don't want none a, of them. An actual grievous injury. Like right when you there. break it's one, because like, it's just like. Well, no, I, I mean that too is horrible. But like, it's it's like a wound that you piss on all the time because uh. that's where your piss comes from, <laughs> and it sucks and yeah. it hurts like a motherfucker we don't dude. have to move on generally but i'd like to I not talk to about on. dick injuries no, 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 at I all move on, actually, okay i want to apologize to you trey for losing that brisket i think i already did but it's clearly been a wound for you and i'm sorry well no that's the to me in my head that's the story that relates most to mm-hmm. you eating like a dog yeah i think i did try it. i am wondering if i told you i tried it just so i didn't have to feel as guilty i kind of feel like maybe yeah but I also feel like I did because I remember that conversation. But also, my memory, I don't know if it's its partially COVID, I think, but the pandemic fuck with my memory ability. So, I was wanting to talk about, you brought this up earlier saying we should talk about it. Uh, one specific song, Closing Time. But I've also looked up an article and I was, thinking, yeah. I was thinking we could look, we could maybe go over some songs that are not about the thing that people think they're about. Like mm-hmm. that might be fun. You know, so, charm kind of life. Yeah, well, I don't know. We'll see what's That's on this list. Deal. We could come yeah, up yeah, with any. Head at it. Uh, but so closing time. I was telling Drew that last, last night, and he said he didn't know. Although I thought we had talked about. I before. think you probably told Do me. Do you know before. what closing time's it's about? about? Having kids, right? Yeah, yeah, it's about his kid being born, which is neat. And like, is, if you it look, it makes at, the song way better. Yeah, if you look at the lyrics, they don't all make sense in that way. I, I read a thing that said he. He made it ambiguous because he didn't think his bandmates would want to play a song about having a baby. That's not, you know, it's not rock and roll or right. whatever. So, but like in some of them, I was like, you know, finish your whiskey or beer or whatever. But some of the other lyrics, they work really well. I think finish your whiskey or beer. Finish up that placenta juice. Well, just like we're not, <laughs> no, we're you, not you can't be, be that guy. We're anymore. not going to be drinking anymore. Like we're, you know, we got. I got to be a dad. I'm not partying right now. Especially she gets oh, pregnant, like you can't drink, woman. and she can't. Well, see, yeah. most of these, most <laughs> of the supportive these, man. Most of these, I thought were from the, are from. <laughs> I the, did mean the man. I mean too. I did too. <laughs> No, you're right. I was reading them all on, as from the perspective of like the baby, because yeah. it's like um, you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here, man. Yeah. Like you got to get up out of her. Uh, oh, I took that one. Her uh, what's it called? Womb. Yeah, but what's the other word for it? Uterus. I, 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 mean, I thought, oh, hospital, I th- I thought you were like an Andy type word for it. <laughs> I was like, the... I, I thought it was a hospital. Yeah, I thought it was a hospital too. Well, I also I've honestly never thought about. It I until also right now. thought that he started the song with that intention when you were explaining this to me last night, Trey. And then we're just coming up with ways like, that yeah. you know, 
Closing time, time for you to go out to the places you will be from. I think that's great yep. when you know what it actually means. Closing time, this room won't be open till your brothers or your sisters come. That one's pretty obvious. And then the best line in the whole song, I think, when you know the real meaning of it, it's such a rad line, is uh, closing time, every new beginning yeah. comes from some other beginning's end. Yeah. yeah. It's a great fucking song. It's a super great song. It's but, one of them And songs, I know who I want to take me home, you know? It's one of them songs that like people are like, oh, it's so overplayed. And it's like, because <clears throat> it's such a great song. So, I do y'all, so much do y'all have any off the top of your heads that fit this category before I just start looking through this list here? Pumped Up Kicks, for sure. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, songs that most people don't know what they actually mean? Yeah. Or that mean something like different than what people think they actually mean. But yeah, the other one too. Like hey, y'all. Uh, Oki from Muskogee. Hey, y'all's a good one. Yeah. Oki from Muskogee. I, I, on I think I, follow, I fall on the other side of that one. On Oki? I don't think it's meant to be that ironic. I think it's a you little bit ironic. You think he just said that afterwards? I think that he's like writing from somebody else's perspective. perspective right. Yeah, I could see... I could see him being like he really did write that song, and then he saw how people were. Will you react. elaborate a little bit for the yeah, people yeah, yeah, in case so, they don't fuck with that? So because it's uh, not the Oki from Muskogee when Merle Haggard wrote it. Basically, those are not his opinions. Like ev everybody kind of thought, it was like yeah, Merle Haggard. See, listen, to Oki from Muskogee. This is how this guy feels. And, and like, like, what are the things he says? In what that song? Uh, we don't smoke where marijuana in Muskogee. And mm -hmm. of course, that's probably true for Muskogee, but it Merle Haggard clearly smoked marijuana, and he wasn't the type of dude that like that was in that song like that fucking that's a super MAGA ass dumb fuck person in that song yeah right and Merle Haggard wasn't that and it kind of sort of became a, a anthem for those people and there was reports of like Merle Haggard being like no 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 I wrote that song ironically I just saw the sign Oki from Muskogee and I was kind of making fun of that but I and with you I could see him having really wrote it and then just saying that or like seeing that sign, making fun of it, but I don't think his intention was people to hear it and go, huh, what a bunch of dumbasses from Muskogee. I think he just was writing a song from somebody else's perspective. Yeah, I just... Uh, I've yeah. always thought that. Yeah, you know? you're probably right. Might not be a good example. Well, I'm sure I would lose that argument with Tyler Mayhenko. I was I was saying... I, don't, I can't... Everything I just said, I either heard from... Tyler Mahan Co. Or I heard it uh, on Tales from the Tour Bus. One of those two. Uh, the ones I always think of are Hey Ya, like you said. Absolutely. It's like it's if you actually one. listen to the lyrics of Hey Ya, it's very depressing and fucked up. Or not not like fucked up, but you know, the it's sad. Mm -hmm. It's very That's sad. Super fab. And then the most famous one, I think, is Every Breath You Take, mm -hmm. which everybody thinks is like a love song. It's stalkery. People, people play it. It's not just stalkery. It's like full on about stalking yeah. and stalkers you yeah, know what yeah. i mean yeah yeah like uh and i'm trying to think semi-charmed life is a good one because it's so poppy and upbeat it's wild that semi-charmed life was ever even on the radio in my opinion they cut dude, that one like, line every now and then yeah but not always no, i've heard it on the radio and they, they play heard it. it you talk about the one uh doing crystal meth will lift you up until you break don't stop, stop. yeah don't come down and stop give it to the uh bump i took the hit that i was given and i bumped up. again I then i bumped bump. I took the hit that I was given, then I bumped again, then I bumped, bumped again. again. I, mm. How do I, I get, get back, back to the place where I fell asleep, asleep inside you? How do I get myself back to the place where you said I want something? And that whole thing, I want something else to get, get me, me through, that, other yeah. than the fucking meth I've been doing. Yeah, right, so you're pretty pussy. hardcore. I'm trying. What's that song? It's like uh, it's a little bit of that, little bit of this. Started bit with of a kiss, and now we're up to back. Like Michelle Branch? Like knocking down the door of your candy store. It's a little bit of that, little bit of this. Little Holy bit started of that. with a kiss, and now yeah. we're something. something. All in the game of love. Oh, All yeah. in the game. That's Michelle Branch. Yeah, Michelle yeah. Branch. Or Vanessa Carl, it's Michelle Branch. Uh, they're the same person to me. That may not be the song I was even thinking of at all. Okay. There's some song like that that's actually did you about know, rough sex. Did you know 50 Cent's I'll Take You to the Candy Shop is not about candy? Get the fuck out of here. A lot of people don't know that. What's it about? Sex. Oh, okay. Oh, cool. Magic stick? Don't you dare tell me that that's not about a stick that's magic. It is. Okay, good. But it's his personal stick that's mm. magic. So you're going to go to the... Wait, you got a list of some sort? Yeah. 
Was, I'm down. Branch, you I can't are, think, are you down? Because I thought I was about to say, so this don't, this don't hurt for you. No, it does it for okay. me. I can't think of any more songs, though. No, and I'm I feel trying like, to think you, it's I feel like you're going to hit me with like at least two where I'm like, fuck, I did know that, and I think about it a lot. I haven't even looked through this list yet, so I don't know what's going to be on it, but I'm not just going to sit here and read a list. I'll try to like... Oh, oh, I bet a lot of people... Red Ragtop by uh, Tim McGraw. I bet a lot of people don't realize that's about abortion. It's absolutely about abortion. Dude, but... That song is that song's overt and explicitly that, about abortion. I know abortion. that, but my reasoning in saying that a lot of people didn't know that is because I don't think they would have played it on the radio. I think I a lot of people weren't Corey. listening to lyrics. They started playing it, and everybody's like, oh, I, mean, I think that's it. Because, dude, You're I, making I think, a good point, I think but, it's wild, overt, but it's wild to me that that song could ever know, be misinterpreted. But people didn't know Fancy was about a prostitute, and dude, it's very clear. They just don't be listening. They just don't listen, dude. Mm-hmm. But I'm telling you, dude. They would have, if if them people knew this song's about abortion, they wouldn't have fucking, a lot of them radio stations where I'm from wouldn't have played that shit. Less popular band overall, though they've definitely got, you know, a pretty big cult following, and I'm a huge fan of theirs, but like, Alt-J, mm-hmm. they're, they're all like, you know, you make it easier and you run away. That's a pretty good one. fucking love Alt-J. Like, I know. Great live band. Dolphins go. Uh, so good live. So good. Fucking awesome. I've heard. Anyway, their lyrics are actually really fucked up. A lot of them are. Like real rapey and shit. But apparently, what? apparently they're about, the songs are about actual rapes. Crimes or rapes. That they have that committed. Happen. No, no I'm not just that they like, But anyway. Um, okay, let's take one more break to tell you about our long, long time friends. Over at Blue Chew, fall is here, and we could all use a stiff breeze, baby. That's right. This episode is sponsored by Blue Chew. Guys, confidence can take you far in life. It can also help in the bedroom, especially when it comes time to step up to the plate. That's what Blue Chew's for, baby. That's where it comes in. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in chewable tablets and also at a fraction of the cost. And there's things that you can take anytime, day or night. Y'all know that. I've told you about it before. Anytime, it don't matter. You, you think it's about to happen? Pop one, baby. You can plan ahead or just be ready whenever the opportunity arises. It's simple. Sign up at BlueChew.com, consult one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you receive the prescription within days. I promise, I've done it. The best part, it's all done online, so you ain't got to have none of them weird visits to the doctor, and you ain't got to see the pharmacist You know that you went to high school with. It's not going to be weird. They're made in the USA, all right? Prepared and shipped directly to your disc- door in a discreet package with Blue Chew men everywhere excited to see the postman. Because you know that means that your time and your package have arrived, baby. They always say first impressions are important. What about lasting impressions? That's why you need Blue Chew. Come on. We got a special deal for our listeners. You know it. Blue Chew, you can get it for free. When you try our promo code RED, R-E-D, at checkout, just pay $5 shipping. It's BlueChew.com, by the way. Promo code RED. You can get it just $5 shipping. Get everything for free. It's a tremendous deal. You literally have nothing to lose. For more details and important safety information, uh, please go to BlueChew.com. Again, use promo code RED. It's free. I promise you. You ain't ever going to have a harder dick in your life, buddy. It is something else. BlueChew.com. Uh, promo code RED. And we thank them so, so very much. For sponsoring the podcast. Brand new sponsor of the podcast. I'm going to say brand new sponsor, longtime friend, because this, uh, uh, this is a true thing. This is a friend of over 30 years of mine. This is Uncle Bod, baby. A lot of people have been wondering how the buttercream dream has been getting into shape. Well, I'm finally ready to tell you, are you ready to get in shape but not ready to head back into your local cesspool that they call a gym? Well, I know I was. If you gained a few unwanted pounds during COVID and run out of energy to chase your kids around the house, Uncle Bod's 100%, I'm serious, 100% virtual fitness platform was designed for people just like you who'd like to be healthier, leaner, fitter, but don't always have time to hit the local pump and hump four to five days a week. Listen, Uncle Bod's going to design a program based on your lifestyle, whether you're working out at home, at the gym, or constantly on the road. And since all of our programs... That's all of our, by the way, that all of our being Uncle Bod. All of Uncle Bod's programs are exclusively lightweight and bodyweight exercises. You don't have to mortgage your family's future by buying a bunch of expensive and massive equipment that you ain't going to use anyways. 
Look, it's all lightweight and body weight exercises. You gain as much lean muscle and it's heavy weight lifting, but without the additional stress on your joints and soft tissue. There's no reason to go in there and beat yourself up. You can get in just as good a shape by doing things that are sensible, I promise. Their Uncle Bod's lightweight, high rep exercises not only grow lean muscle, they also promote endurance and mimic the effects of cardio. So you get the best of both worlds. You're not really having to do this and then go run five miles, I promise. It's 100% virtual. Clients can train exclusively through the Uncle Bod app. Essentially, it's a personal trainer in your phone that guides you through your custom program or upgrade to live training up to five times a week where Robbie, yeah, Robbie, my boy, will train you live via Zoom from the comfort of your own home slash gym slash breakfast nook. Look, guys, I was convinced that because I was on the road all the time that there was just no way that I was ever going to be able to get in shape. I was like, look, maybe I can cut it down a little bit. I can start eating better, but like I can't ever get in a routine. I'm never going to be able to do it. It's not true. My buddy Robbie was like, man, listen, yes, you can. I promise. I can hook you up with this. Like I can get you things that, that you can do in your hotel room or in the gym at the hotel, but sincerely, you only have to leave your hotel room. And I was like, okay. So me and Robbie started working together on that. And then Robbie was like, I, th- I think I should do this. I was like, you definitely should do this for other. If you can do it for me, you can do it for other people because I'm an idiot. So I'm telling you, changed my life. All right. If you're determined to stop blaming quarantine every time you can't walk up a flight of stairs without stopping halfway for a Mountain Dew, book a free consultation with Robbie today. Just it's free. The consultation's free. To learn more about how Uncle Bod can help you take the next step in your health and fitness mission. And by the way. Listeners of this podcast, here's what you're going to do. Go to unclebod.com slash buttercream, and you're going to get 10% off the lifetime of any new membership. For as long as you use it, the lifetime of your membership, 10% off. unclebod.com slash buttercream. But again, you can book a consultation right now with Robbie for free at unclebod.com. And Robbie and uh, Uncle Bod, we appreciate you being the newest sponsors of the Well-Read Podcast. Now back to the show. What does their name mean, Alt-J? Is it's it just uh, like on a keyboard. It is, installs? and that does something. You you push Alt and then J, and that does something on a computer, and that's what it's that's what it's named after, or whatever. But I don't know why or how that. I wanted to make a wish. Yeah, go ahead. I can't. It's not here. So, according to Paul Simon, the song "You Can Call Me Al." Nice. Anybody got anything for that? I, honestly, think? that's one of them songs that I definitely have never really listened. To. I always thought the lyrics odd. were all. I always thought it was kind of like you can call whimsically me. nonsensical or uh-huh. something, you know? Because he's like, you know, I mean, it's pretty, ooh, it's pretty overt, ooh, but he's like, you know, it's like, song, right? ooh, where's my fam? Where's my wife and family? What if I die here? Fucking yeah, you remember that? Like, Man yeah. walks down the street and yeah, na, 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 na. yeah. I can't remember all the lyrics. Can be my bodyguard, I, I can be your love. Chevy Chase in the music video. Yep, yep, yeah, yeah. yeah. I can call you Betty, 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 Betty when you can call, call me, you can call me. Out. I can't get that high. Good job. Call me out. Alt anyway. J makes a Delta sign. Okay, there you go. And that's their like logo, which is a triangle. Is a triangle thing. So anyway, um, he says it's like. It's about a guy wandering through a foreign country, totally out of money. His wife has left him. He's hallucinating and is in a downward spiral, is what Paul Simon says okay. that song's about. Mbop by mm. Hanson. Oh, okay. Well, bop, doop, 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 doop. Hold on. They rule. Oh, me, Booty bop, they're, bop, they're really awesome. They fucking rule. They're I want to really go awesome. see them. They play at like uh, 11 Canes. And 13 and something like that. They play at Canes like a weekend every year, and I want to go so bad at some point. Like uh, They play like five shows. Um, yeah, I, our friend, friend of the show, Jennifer, flew from Chattanooga to Canes to see them and said it was fucking great. Hold on. So they're 11 at the time of the ride. This, we always go, yeah, yeah. Right. Do you remember any of the lyrics besides like uh, that? Because uh, I start, didn't. Start me off. Start me I off. can. I don't know. I mean, I can read you this one yeah, yeah, line. But I don't remember the melody of yeah, this part. But there's lines that it says, You have so many relationships in this life, only one or two will last. You go through all the pain and strife, you turn your back, and they're gone so fast. So it's about like. Who pops a flash? I guess. Like it says, a, It's about the futility of life. Nice. Things are going to be gone eventually. Whether your age, your money, whatever, it will all go eventually. And it's 
Yeah, yeah, I can hear it. Yeah, okay, right on. Them kids are fucking talented. Dude, the fact that they haven't done some wild shit, you know what I mean? Like, you remember, and it's not the same as Bieber because, like, they definitely hit in the 90s, but they didn't sustain the Bieber shit. But, like, when the fact that them 11, 12, and 13 year old really handsome dudes popped were as famous as they did. Play like, those songs. Oh, not one of them has got like five DUIs. Like, they're all Here, fucking famous. I think it's because this, they stopped being famous. The, other than Every Breath You Take, this, I think, is the most famous example of this. I, I thought of another one. Go ahead. Well, no, maybe you've got this one. Uh, Waterfalls by TLC. That, that absolutely. Born, yeah, born in, in the, the USA, USA by Bruce Springsteen. Oh, absolutely. Gets played at all these Republican rallies and all yeah. this shit, whatever. People think it's a patriotic anthem, but it ain't at all. Did you, you know? see that video that one time? A fucking Rascal Flats doing that song. And, like, first off. Did that, they change the lyrics? No, they didn't change the lyrics, but, like, when they went to the part where he says, they put a rifle in my hand to go and kill, kill the, the yellow, yellow man, man yeah. they, like, stood at the end and said to go and kill the yellow man and the whole crowd was like singing with him it's like that's not you're not supposed oh my to god that. that's not bruce springsteen that's so terrifying bruce springsteen was like, saying this is a shit thing that the government did not fuck yeah go kill the yellow man dude that's, that's so like, terrifying to think about somebody taking what you do and turn it into that without actually technically changing, changing anything because like you know jokes get misinterpreted and can be interpreted in any way people want wrote, and it happens all the time any, like, specifics of it by derailing anything that one uh, script I wrote with them p- other people that hit. Yeah, do you know who who I'm talking about? There's been a couple. Yeah. That um, the most recent one. That was the. I, this is what happened to them. It that's was what. Okie that's Muskogee like thing. what that was about. Or it yeah. was the yeah, thing, yeah, yeah. It was the thing that kicked off the whole story. Anyway. Yeah, Hayes. Remember Hayes? I think on our yeah. podcast he told us about she left me for Jesus. Uh, I had to stop doing it. Stop Wheeler. Yeah, Wheeler yeah. had to stop being Wheeler. Yeah, but Hayes would he would stop doing it because that part where I say even worse she had a Jew. I'm obviously kidding, but like the crowd would go scream it in a way that was like, you're like mm-hmm. hey guys, come on now. Well, I mean yeah. Wheeler would have people come up to him and be like, I know you're a Jew, but that's okay, buddy. Lord God, God. so insane. Fucking. Man. He you're, just got married. You're beautiful. Right, congrats. Uh, congrats, buddy. You're beautiful by James Blunt is also a stalker song, apparently. Yeah, well, I mean, well, to and also to hear that guy. He sucks. All right. <laughs> I don't remember anything other than that. I think something all he had, and but he was an asshole too. Like he got he he did one song and then kept getting in trouble for being a dick, getting really hammered and like, but getting handsy with what people. What other song he had? I don't remember any other song other than that one. It was it was fucking. It was another song they had because there's a, a funny ass scene in the office where my, Jan, uh, Jan breaks up with Michael and he's in his office crying and he starts playing that song and he's just sitting there crying listening to the song and then all of a sudden it stops and he clicks again and he's sitting there crying and he's just clicking the free preview of the song because he didn't want to buy the song but he just kept going over it. It was James Blunt. But yeah, that dude, like that, you're, you're beautiful, it's true. Yeah. So I, I get, saw I your keep, face in a crowded space. I keep getting uh, James Blunt confused with that guy that hits. He's got a similar <laughs> name. Who's so got James a, Blunt's not an asshole? I uh, keep mistaking No, no, no. no. He's an asshole hit. and he don't hit. That was just funny to me because you're like, I always get him confused with somebody who actually hits. Kendrick you know? Lamar had that song, King's Dead. And on King's Dead, there's a British dude who sings. Fuck. I got to find it. I got it's, it's. I think it's James something. Give me a second. Uh... This one is a famous example, but in the other direction. I'm sure James you guys, Blake. Yeah, yeah, uh, okay. I'm sure you guys have heard the. Does feel. You've heard the thing about Phil Collins. Yeah, in the not air about tonight. That. You know, in the air tonight. You know what the story is supposed to be? He yeah, saw he a guy saw drowning a or drown. something. So he saw someone see someone drowning, and they. It's didn't a, do shit. here's why I never really. Like, why didn't you do anything? Exactly. That's yeah. what I never understood about the supposed. So apparently, that's all an urban legend, and none of that's true. That's never what he meant the song to be about, and he's quoted as saying that's not what the song. What's is the song about? about? Uh, he says it's about divorce. Mm. Anyway, uh, but the... I've watched a man go through a divorce. But the rumor, you know, or whatever, the urban legend was always that he apparently watched some other dude yeah. allow a man to drown and didn't, didn't do anything. anything I always thought... Like you said, it's like what, he's like up on a bridge. I thought he was in his hotel he's room. watching this guy on a beach. I always thought he was in his hotel something. room. Yeah, and then you couldn't do anything, man. I mean, yeah, well, you, could, you could, fucking go call 911. Yeah, right. But anyway, apparently now that's true, but... Uh, 911 can't keep him away from drowning. No, the they, urban they legend, the urban, the urban legend. I don't think that's illegal. I don't think you have to save somebody from drowning. And like the Good Samaritan Law or something like that, except... In reverse, well, I think that's the name of it, right? It but is. that's not. That's but the, that's what it means. That's is the that finale of Seinfeld? That's how they 
they uh, see a big fat guy getting uh, mugged, and instead of helping him, they're just all roasting him for being fat, and it's on camera. This ain't. There was a woman, a very famous case of a woman who got like either raped and or murdered or something like that in front of like a bunch of people and nobody did anything about it. They, and there allegedly law, that just happened. There was a law made about that, about that incident. There's a phenomenon. Named, that's, named after her. I, I can't there, remember what it is. So was. allegedly that just happened on a train in Philly. A woman was unfortunately assaulted and raped. And the cops are saying that seemingly a lot of people were there and they have no record of them calling the police and maybe some of them filmed it. However, the journalist was writing, what it's they've only checked with one 911, I don't know what, what's the word I'm looking for, place. Dispatcher. Dispatcher, but they were like, but this is a moving train. It could have been a different county yeah, that right. got the call. Well, there's a phenomenon that's about like, a bunch of people see something happen and nobody calls, and it's the the diffusion of responsibility. The, there you go. Everyone yeah. like it, it, everybody's I, like somebody will do something. I think, about, but everybody thinks. I that. think there's that, a all the time when like I'll just be a fucking dick and like I will we'll get a group email or whatever, and I'll be like Trey or Drew will respond to that, and then like I think ha- sometimes all of us will it happened that. today. Yeah, <laughs> because, Dude, but a big difference to that the one that I'm talking about today, I don't think it's my responsibility to reply to, but I know what you regardless, mean. Regardless, you know what I'm saying. Like, yeah, everyone assumes someone. I don't else think will it's y'all's. I think it's our manager or agent. Nobody fucking does. But like, I'm so guilty of that. Like all the time, just being like, yeah, well, like somebody else will fucking do that. Slightly yeah. different but similar thing. I would not let a woman get raped. There is a God. study. Um, there, I, I don't, I'm not bragging. I don't have that in me. There's like countless examples in my life where I just like freak out about whatever it is, whether it's danger to me or other people. Like uh, y'all have know the story where me and DJ Dre and uh, Andy were at a music festival and they tried to close me in with a fence and everybody just stopped and I freaked out and started kicking down the fence. I have verbally attacked police officers numerous times for fucking with homeless people. I'm just too stupid, but yeah, yeah. there's a um, <laughs> there's a study, I don't know if it's new, I just saw a video of it, where people are alone in a room, like a waiting room, and then they release smoke under a door just from a smoke machine, and they freak out, but if people are in the waiting room with a bunch of people, and no one else reacts to it, yeah, then the one person sits there for like a long amount of time, 90% see, of the time. Yeah, dude. Me doing that being like, I don't want to be the dumb motherfucker. One time... Uh, Back in the day, emceeing at Side Splitters one weekend for uh, Leanne Morgan, matter of fact, there was a, uh, the fucking fire alarm went off. It malfunctioned, but nobody knew it malfunctioned. The fire alarm went off and that no one, no one got they up. all just, everybody it, assumed. it was packed too. And they all, everybody just sat in there. I had to go up there and tell them, I guess it's a procedure or something. I think they had to get them. They had to walk out. That don't make no sense. But yeah, I feel like I did it in school, single file. I feel like that is what happened, though. But it, I had to go up and like address them on the stage because they were all just like sitting there, Everybody's just like, like this is bullshit. Yeah, I right. think it's because we've all heard so many alarms not be God right. Man. Yeah. yeah, the alarm that called, but, cried wolf. You yeah, know? but I, I'm not. I'm again. I'm not even trying to brag. I'm 99 percent sure I would have been like, "Hey, there's fucking smoke coming in here." Yeah. I know you would have, and that's not a de- like I know for a fact, and I would have so, been the dumbass that was sitting there like. Oh my god, I wasn't paying attention. Somebody definitely came in here and said, "Don't be alarmed. There's fucking smoke here," and I didn't hear it. And I'm going to be the fucking dumb fuck. So I'm very. I, I don't like know if I'd say right. anything to because they can all see that unless there's somebody blind in there. We can all see the smoke. Yeah, but like if smoke start, if I was sitting in the waiting room and smoke started coming under a door, I would fucking leave. Yeah, I think I like talking about it. I'd be like, I "Hey, never, I like being right." I honest to God, it would take you actually. I hate up being the right. Whole room before I would even notice it because when I'm in the way... Yeah, I might not know. That waiting, would be hilarious if there's a video of somebody on that study who leaves. just didn't know. Yeah. I could just, be on my phone and my headphones in or something dude, and not... I could totally see I myself I read comic that. books when I'm in the waiting room and, like, I'm I'm fucking in it. So, like, yeah, I definitely would be so, fucking oblivious. this one is, is funny to me. <laughs> uh, Jump by Van Halen. Yeah. Yeah. That's not about jumping. Well, jump. jump. Yeah, right. Yeah. That's, that's not about jumping. Because it does. Seems like that song's about jumping. It, they mainly talk about jumping. That's pretty much what they say. Yeah. yeah. You might as well jump. Yeah. So why don't you just oh, go so ahead suicide? go ahead and jump? So listen listen to this quote. Listen to this quote from David Lee Roth. Hey, you wild Direct quote. I was watching television one night and it was the five o'clock news. <laughs> 
listen to this. And there was a fellow standing on top of the Arco Towers in Los Angeles. He was about to check out early. He was going to do the 33 stories drop. There was a whole crowd of people in the parking lot downstairs yelling, don't jump, don't jump. And I thought to myself, jump. So I wrote it down and ultimately made it onto the record. That's amazing. Live your dream, dude. Everybody said, said, don't jump. And and he's like, and I thought, no. Kill yourself. Dude, I, don't, I hate being the person that's dumbfounding. Like, who, who says things like, oh, yeah, it was a different time. You couldn't do that nowadays. But for real, if a, if a songwriter nowadays wrote that song and said they were inspired by watching a man almost kill himself and they thought, I wish he'd have jumped or whatever, dude, they'd get raked over the fucking coals so goddamn bad. That's hilarious, though. 100%. Yeah, that's kind of fucked up. Now, was I right about waterfalls? Because I remember people not knowing what it was. AIDS. And then when everybody found out it was about AIDS, freaking out. But maybe that was just because our parents don't be listening to our music. Maybe it wasn't like misinterpreted as much as our parents. I don't think it was misinterpreted. Didn't Didn't the video kind of make that clear? I think they was they were in front of waterfalls and then they became like liquid holograms. Yeah, but there was other. It was on crazy. There were cut scenes. Yeah, it was. Yeah, that was awesome. That's, so, that's a masterpiece. Listen honestly. to this one. I don't know if you get away with this. I mean, I I seen a rainbow many, yesterday. Like, but too many storms. Sorry. I don't know if the like. Tell me what y'all think about this. Jack and Diane by John Mellencamp. Very, it's not that very, happy. Very straightforward, right? Well, yeah. according to Mellencamp, Jack is a black guy. <laughs> Isn't that hilarious for some reason? Because like, there's nothing that indicates that. It's just like it's like, Dude, sort of like when J.K. So Rowling, when J.K. Rowling said Dumbledore was gay the yeah. whole time or whatever, and it's like maybe he was. Well, but at like, least Dumbledore never had a woman around. You yeah. know what I mean? Like I could see that, but like Jack, it's just at what point in this? I gotta song, look these lyrics up. Sucking on a chili dog outside the test freeze. I mean, like obviously a black guy can do that, but like. What about it? Is he just saying, "Oh yeah," and he happens to be black, or was he trying to make oh, some sort okay. of political statement? Oh, okay. So, statement? well, this I, I get. So, and this don't hit the classic uh, record company bullshit, I guess, especially in the early eighties. He had a whole fourth verse. About- he had. He apparently had a whole. He had it, lyrics that explicitly spelled out that Jack was black, and the record uh, label made him cut those lyrics. Well, and damn. So, that, so, oh no, I gotta meet your dad, like that shit. Like, <laughs> <laughs> what was it? Do you know the? No, I don't. Bet when she sees me, your mom's gonna be sad. Uh, oh, what about this? This is your boy, Cho Margaritaville. Oh, dude, honestly, I've just always assumed that one was pretty straightforward or I just was like I bet my man is just so smart he wrote this in order to because he just knew it was going to be a paycheck the song's narrator isn't on vacation but rather wasting away in a beach resort community getting tattoos he doesn't remember looking for lost salt shakers and drinking oh, he's, he's in, he's drinking Alzheimer's. endless cocktails to help him hang on I think is that's he, very clear is he yeah. aimless and depressed because of a failed relationship it sure seems like it and as the song unfolds he goes from insisting it's nobody's fault to hell it could be my fault to finally it's my own damn fault I well, want to know whoever is writing this what they think people think the song's about because I think everybody knows that well, I mean, I just thought it was just Jimmy Buffett wrote a beach song. Yeah, whatever. I've never but, really listened to it deeply time, at all, like, but I thought it was just like a but beach at the same song. time oh. though, like knowing Jimmy Buffett and loving him like I do, like I definitely buy that because Jimmy Buffett has some really great songs. So it makes sense to me that like you know one of his more just commercially popular songs, he had something else in mind for it. But like, yeah, I definitely thought it was just like, hey, hey Jimmy Buffett was drunk, probably just wrecked a plane, and you know, dude, I think almost all his songs are deep, dude. I, Listen, no, yeah, we, we agree we've Jimmy talked Buffett. about it. Yeah. I, I was going to be like, are you fucking serious right now? Because I thought you'd shit on me for Jimmy Buffett. We've definitely, you have you've definitely expounded on I have. Jimmy Buffett on here before. I ain't Listen, never shit on Jimmy Buffett. No, I, don't Listen, think, dude, probably him. I didn't shit on Jimmy Buffett. Okay, good. It was our fans. I know no, that. No. They shit on him all the time. I remember, I-, I remember the conversation. I asked y'all on here if you had any like... Uh, like guilty pleasure, and, and I said, "Well, I don't." And you really, were, really and you said, "You were like, I don't feel guilty about it." But my answer is Jimmy Buffett, and then you start talking about how much he is for you. Okay, That's what right. brought it up. I might have said that, like, I think parrot heads are ridiculous, and I do. They are so. <laughs> or made fun of you for going to the concert. About this, but yeah, macho I man. I didn't mean macho it. Macho man by the Village People. Oh yeah, uh, 
sucking dicks. So I've got to pretend to be a macho man. Uh, but. So, all right, I'll just read this whole thing. When you think of the Village People song, Macho Man, two words that probably don't come to mind are dark and serious, but that's apparently what the songwriters well, had. Apparently, what the songwriters had in mind, according to David Hodo, otherwise known as the construction worker. Quote At the time, Macho had been banned from the English language by the feminist movement. Uh, and then the article writer says, we don't remember what? that being the case, but whatever. Some people, <laughs> some people had fears that masculinity was under attack and the world needed a song championing, championing men. And who, who better? Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> and it, yeah. When the producers pulled us together to do this, they wanted this whole thing to be very serious. It was going to be very dark and very serious. Luckily, the village people decided there's no way we can do this seriously and ended up recording the campy, lighthearted version. The village version people instead. decided that. I don't know if we can pull serious off. This, yeah, yeah, this is too song, dumb. When you listen Should to I the leave song, the hard hat on? <laughs> remember that lyrics like, every man ought to be a macho, macho man to live, <laughs> to live a life of freedom, machos make a stand. We're meant without a hint of irony. And that's really funny. That's rich know. as hell. That the people that, hey, the people when you that get up there in them Daisy Dukes dancing in girl cowboy well, boots, dude, I gotta give it up mean to it. Village people, because like, it sounds like it was meant to be totally unironic, and they realized like, this is the most ridiculous, ridiculous shit right. in the world. But did they write it, or did no, somebody just give it to them? It was written by some Frenchmen trying to be macho. Of course, that's dude. That's hilarious. The French are misogynistic. 99 Luft balloons. Oh, that's about. Uh, oh shit! What I, I did used to know this. The German, the ninety nine. I don't know this song. You don't know ninety nine. Wait, keep going. Don't know this song. Wait, keep going. I speak German. Dude, I don't think I knew a single lyric of that song till right now. I know the one you're talking about. Now they eat ass and old meat. Oh yeah, dude. They eat all the ass. They'll eat old meat out of an ass. Absolutely. What is it about? What the fuck? So it was inspired. Wait, but this isn't misinterpreted. It's in a different fucking language. They, but they have an no, American version. The one okay. that was like a hit here was in English. Okay. They made an English 99, version. Because it's 99 Red Balloons. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, Red Balloons. It was inspired by something lead singer Gabriel Kerner witnessed at a Rolling Stones concert in West Berlin. Mick Jagger released thousands of balloons at the end of the concert. They were picked up by the wind and carried over the Berlin Wall into East Berlin. You could say, oh, that's poignant or whatever. says, I'll never forget that message. And then she and gu guitarist, lyricist, Carlo Carges imagined what might happen if the balloons were stake mistaken for UFOs, which then led to various countries shooting missiles at each other and inevitably a full-on nuclear war. So 99 Luft Balloons is about nuclear devastation caused by balloons released into the sky by Mick Jagger. How about that? Did not see that coming. No, me neither. Yeah, I, don't, I don't think that's like, it's misinterpreted. I think it's just like, that nobody knows there. what this song's yeah, right. about. Like, you, you, nobody knows this backstory, so how the fuck would they possibly yeah. get there? Yeah, yeah right, like, exactly. Like, there's definitely a lot of John Prine songs that like... Some of these, though, are not like that. Some of these are... Like, a lot of these are... Examples you and you're can like, see. Oh right, yeah, that's what right. I'm saying. Like you're like, oh yeah, okay. I but yes, yeah, some of them I agree but, with. And you. also sometimes it's just like, don't you think? Because I well, I know for a fact Todd Snyder does this. Cause he talks about it in a show, and I've seen examples of it. Like he'll get interviewed by Rolling Stone. They'll ask him about a song, and he will go into this full explanation about what the song's about. And then like two years later, he'll be interviewed by Variety about the same song, and he will give a completely fucking different story. Uh, he also does more drugs than yeah, Keith Richards. He said he says on stage, though, that he does that shit on purpose. He just, yeah, making He's it up. Like, it's was it's, fun it's way more fun than and to then, talk about whatever. I've been at a show where he described a song he was doing and why he wrote it and and it was completely different than the last time and I it think was great. maybe we've talked about this one before off podcast what about all star by smash mouth yeah what's it about we have talked about this and it is hey now you're an all-star but it's a cold place. It's about global warming. It's about global warming. Oh, oh but change. there are other songs it's about a cool global place. warming, It's too. a cool place, and they say it gets colder. You're bundled up now. Wait, wait till you get older. older. The media man begs, begs to, to differ. differ. Judging by, by the hole in the satellite, satellite picture. picture. The ice we skate is getting, getting pretty thin. thin. The water's getting warm, so you might as well swim. The, the world's on fire. How about yours? That's, That's the way I like it, and I'll never get bored. But Walking on the Sun was also about that. We did talk about this in the podcast because we were like, holy shit, that guy is like, 
low key, yeah. really. Like, Who is it? Passionate. Who's the band? Smash, Smash Mouth. Mouth. That's what I thought. Shout out to my man. He's going through he's some going shit, through right, some right, shit now. right now. No, now, but he didn't like say any slurs or anything. Like, he just was like, "Fuck everybody here." <laughs> he did say, "I'll kill your whole fucking family." I swear to God. That's fine, but he didn't we don't say know what they did. Black. He didn't say because they're black. Exactly. So, and but, Trey, what happened to you tonight on stage? By the way, side note, real quick: if you listen to the podcast and you come to a show. Don't talk during the show. Just enjoy it. Don't laugh. don't even, talk in support. Don't say even in support. Hey, yeah. man, good job. Because if if it's quiet enough in laugh. there when you say it, that's distracting. Not, it, and look, we love our fans, and we do know that some of y'all like we've had so many people tell us y'all are the only comedy show I've ever been to. So it's possible that you just don't know how to behave at one. But yeah, in the middle of a setup, you're not supposed to look at the, the fucking comedian and go, "I've been there." Yes, I agree with all that shit. Yada yada yada. My favorite thing that the Smash Mouth guy said when he was in his tirade, do you, do you remember what he said? He goes, I will he, when you say he it. He goes, he was sitting there and the, the feedback from the guitar was horrible and he was clearly hammered and he was looking around at the crowd and he just goes, if I could suck my fucking dick, I wouldn't be here right now. Yeah. <laughs> I'd never leave the house. I'd never leave the house. If I could suck my own dick, I'd never leave the Isn't house. Isn't that a bit? I'd never leave the house. Isn't that an old bit? It is. Yeah. It's like an old, yeah. But, uh, but it's about Marilyn Manson. I, I know that we're jo- we're joking. He clearly has some mental issues, and we don't mean to make a lot of he it. Fucking I hope that, the I hope he fucking quit the band. I hope he gets better. I mind uh, stealing Brett. Trey didn't know. Temple of the Dog. That yeah, blew my mind. Hunger Strike. I think everybody knew what that one was about. It was about going hungry. I don't mind stealing bread well, guys, from the mouths of decadence. Speaking of stealing bread, I'm kind of fucking hungry. Me I'm, too. I'm I don't. Sandwich. I'm I, gonna jump off. I don't know what's up with this. Well, we're gonna leave. leave. Uh, hang on a minute. Hang on nope. a minute. Let oh, me just mind. read a couple more. Losing my religion by REM. Well, what's that about? Uh, it's not about losing your religion. According to uh, Michael Stipe, it's an old Southern saying. The mm-hmm. same as being at the end of your rope or reaching the final right. straw and yeah. snapping. I think I did uh, know that, but I thought he was doing a double entendre, like because he fell in love with a dude, so he's got to let go of his religion. Is that stupid? Is, no, I can see that. Like I'm not a Christian anymore because I want to suck dick, and I'm yeah. not won't let me. Uh, what 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 is rich girl about? The rich yeah, girl. hold on, hold on. Before we move on, that's me in the corner. That's me in the spotlight, losing my religion, trying to keep up with you, and I don't know if I can do it. I don't know. I've said too much. I haven't said enough. I just, I, 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 I very like thought it. it was about him falling in love. Yeah, that sounds like him coming out. I'm choosing my confessions, trying to keep on an eye on you. Well, I don't know. Maybe I'm just not supposed to tell a gay man what his songs are about. Did you ever think of that, Drew? I hate. I don't know. It doesn't say. I fucking about love that. REM. Rich girl by Hall and Oates. This may be the most shocking revelation on this list. My it God. says the rich girl in the hall and Oates. The rich girl in the no, they don't, I hate it when they do that shit. The, they put it number one if it's the most. The rich girl in the hall and Oates song, "Rich Girl," was in fact a man. That's right. It was written about a guy who was the heir to a fast food fortune, Chicken Boy, <laughs> way before his time. But a, a Chicken Boy type. But that's yeah. not a misinterpretation. That, Obviously, that's but, just they wanted to make the song about this person, but it's catchier to do "Rich Girl," right? And so they did that. It's a guy whose dad owned 15 KFC franchises. Are you for real? Victor Are you Walker. shitting us? Actual chicken boy. Chicken boy, <laughs> chicken boy yeah. <laughs> Man. Hall, Oats, and Cho hate chicken boys. I fucking love Hall and Oats. Have I ever told oh, you? Oh, dude. Hall and Oats Hall and rules. rules. I guarantee on your Peloton you fuck with them a lot. Fuck right? yeah, buddy. Hall and Oats and REM, too. REM fucking rules, Abs- man. Oh, dude. Absolutely REM rules. But I feel like... My buddy Ben, who's the smartest person to know, it's his favorite band. People give them I their flowers, it. though. I mean, they do Hall and Oats, too. But people are like, oh, Hall and Oats, that cheesy... And not like, yes, of course they are. But like, dude, banger, 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 banger. All, all bangers. of them. They're fucking tremendous. Also, you could rap over every one of their beats, in my opinion. And I'm sure some rappers have. Yeah, <laughs> Dude, tell me for real though, because there's certain songs like this that, like, as many times as they're played, you're always putting you in a good mood. If you, if I was feeling sad and you played "Rich Girl," mm-hmm. I'd be like, I would like, I couldn't help it. Like, I could be at my dad's funeral and I still would just be like, okay, fuck, you got me. Like, Why don't they great... change it to "Rich Girl" primarily because because he's a rich boy sounds stupid, or rich and guy, you, and you want to sing rich about guy. girl? Well, also, the coming from a man, line. yeah, you know, oh, it's a bitch girl. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's because a man rapping about a rich guy, it's like a, there's something toxic masculinity were, won't allow were, that. Oh, you're boy, complaining about were, a rich guy. They, I, <laughs> I want to say they're a boy band. They're not, but like that's that was their you sang to women. You know what I mean? Like yeah, it's a hit harder. It's a rich boy. Yeah, you know what sure. I mean? Like singing about a rich boy and complaining about him. You can uh, pretty gay. Not arguing with the logic. I was just. Oh, man. 
Oh, I just. Do you think that's why? He just said it. Just everything about it just sounded just, just sounded right. and played better to make yeah. it about a girl. Yeah. All right. Well, we can go now. Okay. I'm sorry. I just thought that you were looking for your sandwich. I thought you were looking at your sandwich. I didn't know you were still wanting to go. I wasn't being like fuck this bit. I thought you were like it was about to be food. Bit don't hurt for you. Get us out of here. Bit like didn't hurt for me. All right. He thought hey. the bit didn't hit for me like 30 minutes ago. Hey. What you can do to come see us on the road and not heckle us is uh, go to wellreadcomedy.com. That is W-E-L-L-R-E-D comedy.com. We are currently in D.C. It's been very fun. Thank you to everybody who has come out in D.C. Um, off this weekend. And then next time we'll be on the road, we're going to be in Seattle. And then we're going to be in Spokane. And then we're going to Lexington, Kentucky. Then we're going to Charlotte, North Carolina. And now we're going to be in Naples, Florida. And uh, am I missing one here? New Orleans, New Louisiana. Orleans, December 3rd. Yeah. And then... Naples, Florida. Naples, Florida. We're rounding out the year with our uh, Christmas shows at Zanies, which is going to be a fun time. Uh, we can't tell you exactly what, but we do have something special planned for those shows. So you should come get tickets now. Now one show is like pretty much virtually sold out. So grab them at WellRedComedy.com. Also, thank you all for listening to the Well Red Show. We love to stick around longer, but we got to go. Tune in oh, next wait. week. If- I thought of another one. Okay. Cornbread and butt sex. That's true. It's very misinterpreted That's by people. True. But I don't want to tell people what it's really about. No, you'll never know. Uh, thank you. Wait, no. Uh, c- t- tune in next week if you got nothing to do. Thank you. God bless you. Good night. You doggy. They're the liberal rednecks. They like cornbread and butt sex. They care way too much, but don't give a fuck. Some people upset, but they got three big old dicks that you can suck.